Hi everybody. I have recently been given this cigar box. It's a half decent looking cigar box. King Edward cigars with a nice picture of King Edward himself on there. At least I assume that's him. Six cents per cigar. But what's really impressive is that it's full of really old capacitors. And I think the best one out of the bunch is this one right here in a cardboard box. Look at that. And then there's another one, 1,000 microfarad inside this plastic container with a cap on it. And there's a whole bunch of other oldies. Another impressive one is this little, these, I've got three of these little blue guys here, 60 microfarad and 50 volts DC. Um, the person who gave this to me said he used to work at the Applied Research Lab at Penn State University Park um, and back in the 60s and he said that he thinks these might have been experimental tantalum capacitors. So I'm going to dump these caps out and we'll have some closer look, look at them in closer detail. And here's a look at this solar electrolytic capacitor, 8 microfarad, 450 working volts DC. There's a nice waxy finish to the cardboard, uh, so it's probably wax impregnated throughout, throughout the whole volume of the cardboard. And uh, got these nice riveted mounting holes on the back, on, on the top and the bottom. Two color wires, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be negative and that's going to be positive. And as for the capacitance, it's only 84 nanofarads on this, uh, this LCR meter as opposed to should be 8,000 nanofarads so it's really really nowhere near what it's specced to be and a dissipation factor of 1.9 that's not very good either and here's that cap in the black plastic container at first glance you might think it's an AC motor starting cap but Clearly that is not the case. We're looking at 1,000 microfarad, 50 volts DC. And like I said, it has this cap on it and it fits there. It fits nice, nice and snug like that. And that goes in line with this indentation on the bottom of it. And I do have other caps like this with this plastic package in this particular shape on the bottom and I had no idea what it was for until now because I see that if you have a, a cap on the other side then of course this whole thing would fit into some kind of a holder for it and of course there's a hole right here for the wires to go through. Let's see how this is on the meter. So this one's doing much better. 1600 microfarad Got another old DC cap here from, well it's not even used, but caps like this would have been used in vacuum tube radios or even early transistor radios where you would have two or more capacitors within a single package. So this one has a 40 microfarad cap and a 20 microfarad cap, both in the same can. So the common is going to be the outer shell for those things. And let's see, which one am I testing here? Oh yeah, and the way that you tell them apart, they're usually marking very basic shapes like a, a semicircle, or in this case, a square and a triangle. And right here, the cutouts in the, the fiberglass base plate here, there's a square and there's a triangle. So that's how you could tell which was which. So let's look at the square. That's the 40 microfarad. And we're only getting 8. And where it should be 20, we're only getting 7. And again, dissipation factor, not looking too good. But with these old electrolytics, that's what you would expect. Now here's those little blue mushroom caps. And um, again, supposedly tantalum, but I'm not sure because... Back in the 60s, if you were going to fit a 60 microfarad capacity and 50 volts, 
inside such a small space as this, you know, the electrolytics might might have been possible just barely, but um, that's why I'm suspecting tantalum. So I'm going to crack this one open. This has some kind of rubbery heat shrink stuff on the outside, and it looks like the the rubber seal in there is reacting with it somehow. It looks like it's forming some kind of little white crystals in there. So I won't have any hesitation to completely destroy this thing in the process of tearing it up. See, these have a nice purple cap on there, and then there's a white rubber gasket going around the, the outside of it. Very impressive. I've never seen anything quite like these. The little guys here, these are 5 microfarad, 50 volt. So I'm going to crack this one open and see what's in it. Okay, open, got the cap off of it. Now let's pop it open. Ooh, well, there's definitely, oh yeah, wow. That certainly is tantalum. And it's the, some kind of liquid, some kind of clear liquid in there. So that's going to be electrolyte. Wow, it's, I guess it's a wet tantalum capacitor where you have one one terminal the the positive terminal is all the compact tantalum particles pressed together very very tight and compact and then they uh, and then they coat the tantalum with some kind of oxide that's very very thin very thin coating on all those tantalum particles so you get a lot of surface area but in order to of course th these days they it's all dry construction where they then put on a metal coating on top of the oxide but here instead of another metal coating they have liquid so this is f fully infused tantalum particles here with an electrolyte liquid that is very impressive so I guess they really were some experimental tantalum caps. And now it's just draining all over my fingers here. Yeah, it certainly smells like some kind of electrolyte. Got some kind of chemicals in there. I should probably clean my fingers off. So let's test these other ones here. This is 60 microfarad. And as expected with tantalum caps, they're much more reliable than the regular electrolytic caps, 61 microfarad, and also very good dissipation factor. And the smaller ones here, it's rated for 5, and we are reading 5.4. And this one that I took apart, that was 20 microfarad. And I guess I pretty much ruined it. It's, yeah, very hard to actually get 20 microfarad out of this. So I, I guess I should have measured it beforehand to see what the capacitance was. But still, 40, if 42 micro, oh, dissipation factor is not looking good either. So I, I totally ruined this one. Well, let's have a look at some of these other caps. Here we got a, a wax paper capacitor, again from the, the solar electrolytic solar manufacturing corp. A whopping 4 microfarad and 150 volt. And positive, labeled with the word positive. How clever. So right now we're looking at only 1 microfarad and a pretty bad dissipation factor, so it's no wonder why these always need to be replaced in vacuum tube circuits. Here's a mystery cap, EUC, imprinted on the bottom, and 
maybe some score marks. I don't know. Capacitors with score marks back then were hard to come by. They didn't, they didn't bother. If the cap exploded, it exploded. So let's give this one a test. And we're looking at about 230 nanofarads. Here's another one, small metal can. This one's made by Delco Remy. So I'm assuming that this would have been for automotive use. Outside casing would be attached to the chassis and then this would go to some of the electronics in the car, maybe the radio. Which back then would have just been only an AM radio and that's it. And we're looking at about 240 nanofarads. We got some other metal can caps like this one, one microfarad, 200 volt DC. And I've seen these before where they have the, the glass looking coating on the outside. Metal can on the outside, but then on either end, it looks like some kind of hermetically sealed glass insulator that the leads are stuck in. So one microfarad, 0.9 microfarad reading, that's pretty good. But again, I don't know what the dielectric is. I'm going to have to cut one of these open and see what's inside. I sliced open a small one on the bandsaw, and that's pretty much what it looks like. The outside case is brass, and then there's uh, some plastic sheathing on the outside of that. And inside, typical rolled foil construction. Let's see if we can split this open here. There's also a little bit of oil that leaked out when I was cutting it too. Let me see if I can peel apart some layers here. And I think I see a hint of some plastic material. Let me get tweezers or a knife or something. Or maybe it's not plastic. I think it's actually paper. Oil impregnated paper. There we go. I managed to separate one single layer here with metal and dielectric. So there it is. Very, very thin paper-like material soaked in oil. So now I know, next time I see one of these, it's just oil impregnated paper. And that's why they're rated for DC, because these things would be very bad uh, with AC. They would just get too hot. And while I was at it, I cut open one of these plastic cylinder caps, 400 volts and only 0.01 microfarad. So that's what it looks like inside that. And this is probably just going to be some kind of plastic. Okay, I finally managed to separate a layer from that. And that looks like... You can just about see... At first I thought it was another paper, but... It seems to be more like a plastic material. It's very tough if I try to poke a hole in it with my tweezers. Can't even tear it. So certainly polypropylene or polyester, polyethylene, one of those poly-type plastics, that's what this is going to be. Don't know exactly what, though. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of other caps in here. And a lot of them, most of them actually look like they're the, the mica caps. Got some Aerovox caps here. You can always tell it's mica if it's inside the red plastic cube and it's got the little um, the six dots on it and an arrow indicating which direction that you should actually read the dots. And I think I have this the color code printed out so let's see if we can figure one of these out. Alright so here's capacitor color code that I copied from a book and the coding for these right down here. So let's see if we can decode this one. Starting in the top left, we got black, which indicates the, the specification standard is JAN. And then first and second significant figures, so we're looking at 5, 6. Multiplier, bottom right dot is black, so that's going to be just 56 picofarads. This one down here in the middle is gold for the tolerance, and that's a 5%. Spec specified right here, just like for resistors. And then this yellow dot, 
for the class or characteristic. I think I looked it up somewhere else and I found out all the classes here. So yellow is going to be minus 20 to plus 100 parts per million per degree Celsius, the temperature characteristic. Now let's hook it up to this thing. And since the cap since the capacitance is so low, I'll change it to a thousand hertz. And look at that, right on the money with 56 picofarad. There's also a bunch of these other what looks like mica capacitor. They're certainly in the same shape of package, but it's a clear material. Here's four of them all wired in parallel. 152, I'm assuming that's going to be 1,500 picofarad, and then put all four of them in parallel, that should be 60, or 6,000 picofarad, 6 nanofarad, yep, there we go, 6 nanofarad. Here's another one here, 1, 2, 2, so that should be 1,200 pico, and indeed it certainly is. The newest, the most, the latest capacitors that I have in the bunch and again, no score marks on the top like you would get nowadays. So these probably from the 70s or early 80s. Here's an interesting little cap. Probably tantalum because it's 2.2 microfarad and 20 volt and polarized in this teeny tiny little package. Teeny tiny little metal cans. Let's test this one real quick. So this tiny little cap, 2.4 microfarad. Pretty good. And let's have a look at one final cap, electrolytic metal can inside a cardboard tube that I can rotate around like this. And it's got uh, a rubber seal on the end here. 500 microfarad, I really don't think we're gonna be able to get that. Let's see what it comes out to be. Wow, I guess I was wrong. 500 microfarad, that's pretty damn good. But look at the dissipation factor really really poor but then of course that's uh that's at one kilohertz so let's there we go 100 hertz dissipation factor dropped but still shouldn't be that much well i hope you enjoyed that look at some old timey capacitors most of which are still perfectly good unfortunately i'm not going to take the time to sort through every single one of these and characterize them and all that Here's another old wax capacitor. But anyway, this one, it's really impressive. I'm gonna have to put this on, on display somewhere. And these old tantalum caps, I think I'll incorporate them in some kind of project. I'll, I'll save them for a special purpose for sure. So, see you later. Thanks for watching. Please give this video